Oh yeah, my neighbors definitely think I'm crazy out here. Perfect. Pressure cooker, 2506. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. And today we are checking out this All Powers 2500 watt power station paired with this 400 watt solar panel. So this power station boosts just over a 2000 watt hour capacity, a 2500 watt pure sin wave inverter with a 4000 watt peak and multiple ways to charge. So whether you're looking for off-grid power, a home backup solution, or an expandable battery system, this might be the one for you. I'm gonna unbox these, put them through some real world tests, and see how they perform and hold up. All right, so starting with the generator, it came well packed. Opening up the box, first we've got a little pouch with a zipper, and inside you're gonna find a charging cable. You're also gonna get a little warranty card and some instructions that I do recommend you read. The power station is very well packed with thick styrofoam to ensure it's not gonna get damaged during transport. And the generator itself does have some weight to it, which is a good sign. And of course, the foldable 400 watt solar panel. This was also packed well, double boxed actually. This solar panel is designed with its own carrying bag, which is cool. There's also a zippered pocket on the side and within you're gonna find charging cables and instructions. There are also some clips and some desiccant pads. All right, so fresh out of the box, and we have this All Powers R2500 that I have not even turned on yet. It looks really good. Turn it on for the first time. Out of the box, you are getting 65%. All right, so my original plan was to set up a whole bunch of stuff to this right out of the box, drain it down to zero, but I think I am actually going to take it outside because looking out the window, it is very sunny and there's only about three hours left of sun. And I wanna see if I can get this from 65% to 100%. So let's do that. And to charge this up, we are gonna set this solar panel up outside. Setting the solar panel up is easy. There's clips holding everything together. You just unfold it and lay everything out flat. There are legs on the back that are gonna pull out and these are attached to the case by Velcro. So you're just gonna pull those out, set them up to the angle that you prefer, and it's that easy. You can easily set this solar panel up by yourself, but if you do have another person, it'll be that much easier. Once you have the solar panel set up, it's easy to pair with the power station. You just unzip the pouch on the solar panel, and you're gonna find a cord hardwired to the panel, as well as some adapters. All right, so you're gonna have two connections, all you do, plug them in together, and then we're gonna get the power station to plug this into. So you're just gonna pop that open. You're gonna look for the solar port, which is yellow. Take your solar panel, plug it in. We're getting some solar energy. So as you guys can see here, we have it facing somewhat at the sun. It's not perfect. I'm actually gonna try to improve it, but all right. So that is probably as good as we're gonna get it angled at the sun. And let's check out. So we're getting 240 just over, just under 240. It is winter, as you guys can see. The sun is very low. There is a bit of clouds, not too many. I'm pretty sure that if this was the dead of summer or even if it was fully sunny out, we would be getting much closer to 400. I don't know if we'll quite get 400 in the winter. All right, so we're back outside and it's been just over an hour. We started at 66%. We have 80% now. Looks like just around 220 input. All right, so we're back outside. It's been two hours. As you guys can see, the sun is actually hiding behind a house now. Not good. Yeah, so it's at 88%. We're only getting 18, 17 input, not much at all. There is hardly any sun getting past that house over there. It's getting, like I said, it's 4.30. I'm getting pretty hungry. All right, look, I got my air fryer out here. It's clean, that's good. We are gonna plug this in. We're only getting 15 watts right now, so a little unfortunate, but we're still gonna test it out to see if this thing can give an output while taking an input. Air fryer's powered up. French fries. Best French fries you can buy. So we're gonna go air crisp. We are gonna go 425. We're gonna hit go. Let's take a look at this. So we have the air fryer going, preheating. That's probably putting out the most power that's gonna put out 1500 watts output. You guys can see it's already draining the battery. You know, with the only the 18 watt input, 
and 1500 watt output, it's, it's not really a great offset. So we are gonna draw that down. But this is proof that you can use this to cook or whatever you wanna do with it while it's charging. So that is a great feature to be aware of. Oh yeah, my neighbors definitely think I'm crazy out here cooking french fries in winter, but I don't really don't care. Gotta test the products, right? All right, so I am out here and this has been on for 13 minutes. We are down to 54%. The french fries are burnt because I forgot about them, but at least we know that they cooked. So take a look at those. Crispy, very crispy french fries. I'll still eat them because I don't care. Perfect. Not bad. My neighbors definitely, definitely think I'm losing my mind. All right, so it's 4.53. We originally started this little test at 2.26, I believe. As you guys can see, there is almost no sun coming through. We're getting seven watt input, 54% after cooking some French fries, which I know they don't look great, but they actually still taste really good. Packing the solar panel up is also very easy. First, you're just gonna unhook the cables, then fold the panel, lining up the Velcro, then fasten the clips, and it's that easy. This is designed as its own carrying case, which I really like. All right, so yesterday we charged this with the solar panel outside, and then we drew it down to 55%, which is what it's at right now, cooking French fries. And today we are gonna use this Ninja Foodi air fryer. We are gonna use this pressure cooker, and we are gonna use this little Fantic inflator to draw this down to zero and prove that this can put out 2,500 watts. Knowing that this consumes 1,500 watts, and knowing that this consumes 1,000 watts, that's 2,500 watts. This should be about 10 watts, so putting us just over. I haven't done this before, and in case this thing explodes, we do have some safety equipment. I'm gonna want them to be able to identify my body if this thing explodes. So, let's get started. 1506, we know it's gonna do that. Pressure cooker, 2506. Just over 2500 watts. Didn't blow up, I think I'm safe. So it's just below 2,500 right now, so we're gonna plug this little guy into the USB-C port, turn that on, 2,500 watts. Good to go. All right, so there you guys have it. 2,493 output. We got the Ninja Foodi, we got the pressure cooker, and we got the Fantic Inflator hooked up. I feel like we should be putting more stuff into this, so let's throw something in here. I ended up plugging a bunch of stuff into it. We are up over 2,500. Looks like 2516. Air fryer, microphone, GoPro, battery for a vacuum, couple inflators, and a pressure cooker. So wasting a whole bunch of energy, which I don't like, but definitely goes over 2,500. I'm not gonna try to push it any further. I don't wanna damage this thing. So we're gonna call it good, and I'll drain this down to zero, and then we'll see how long it takes to charge. So I made the executive decision not to drain it to zero because I thought that would be a big waste of energy. So we're not gonna do that. As you guys can see, it's plugged in the side there, as well as into my electrical socket. Now. It is saying just over a thousand watt input and one hour remaining to a full charge from 30%. So we'll keep an eye on that. I will keep you guys updated and tell you exactly what the results are. So to keep track of this, I actually just set a timer to 30 minutes. It's up to 32%. We'll come back and check on it then and see if there is any update. Okay, so I just came back to check on this and we had four minutes left. It was actually, I paused it for a bit because I noticed that when it hit 90%, it actually stopped putting out the thousand watts input or accepting the thousand watts input and it went down to between 600 and 700 and now it's showing 581. Now I gotta read up on this. Uh, possibly it's something to do with the last 10%. It uh, reduces the input. 
Uh, but I checked this on other outlets in my home just now while uh, in between this me recording and I was getting the same thing going on. All right, so I did reach out to All Powers and they said that because of the fast charging system, there is a safety feature that limits the input once you hit 90%. So I did a bit of research online and it is actually common to have this feature with certain battery packs with fast charging systems. Basically, this is a safety mechanism to reduce the risk of overcharging your battery. Now, another thing that I wanna mention is that there is an app for this, the All Powers app. So I'm not gonna get into it too much, but it is easy to set up. You do have to activate the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi by holding down this USB output button. Then you connect the device to the app and you can monitor the power station in real time as well as turn on and off some features. Another thing I really like about this power station is its clear display and the variety of power outputs. So as you guys can see here, it's gonna show you guys your input it's gonna show you your output and it shows how much time remaining on the battery based on its current output. So we got 14 days on standby right now with 65% left. So looking at over on the side here, you have this little push to open and you're gonna have your charging port. This is gonna be for your outlets in your home. You're gonna have the charging port for the solar panels, which we're gonna show you guys in a bit here. And you have a fuse here, which can be replaced, uh, which is good to see. Let's look what we got on this side. On this side, another push to open. And you are gonna see two expand battery ports. Now on the front side, here you got your 12 volt DC output. You know, this is gonna work in your vehicle, also known as a cigarette lighter for some of you younger kids that uh, have never seen those before. You also have these ports here, which I'm not super familiar with. Uh, 12 volt, 10 amp. As you're gonna see for each one of these, you have a little power button. So to use this, you basically are just gonna power that on and then you can use those ports. You have the same button here and the same button here. All right, so next you have your AC outputs and you are gonna have four of these 20 amp and one output for your recreational vehicle use only. So over here, we're gonna have some USB outputs. So we have the regular USB-A 18 watt, we got two of those, and then we have two USB-A 12 watt, and then just above that, you guys are gonna see two USB-C 100 watt ports. All right, so after testing this 2500 watt power station setup and the solar panel, I have to say, I'm impressed. It handled everything I threw at it, from household appliances to cooking french fries outside while charging, and even reaching its 2500 watt power output. With just over 2,000 watt hour capacity, a long life battery rated for over 3,500 charge cycles, this is a serious contender for anyone needing reliable portable power. If you think this portable power station is a cool product and you might be interested in getting one for your home, I will leave a link in the description and you can check it out for yourself. Also, don't forget to like the video if you made it this far. Consider subscribing to the channel and if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments and I will make sure to get back to you. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.